Hey guys, what's happening? Oh man, I'm finna lose it. <laughs> oh, this, this, oh man, this is so good. No, the god of the symbiotes. Man, Donnie Cates, oh. Man, he wrote the mess out of this. And like Marvel as a whole is bringing it together with Marvel Legacy, like beyond what we saw with the one shot and your countdown to infinity, which we will get to. So continue reading and be sure to get those. But the connections that Marvel is making between their different storylines and they are bringing in new characters and making some brand new concepts. But even with doing that, they're keeping so much consistent with telling these new stories and telling these new origins like I am shaking right now <laughs> because these guys are really putting the work in and making these stories connect. Oh man, like what a time. What a time to be a comic book lover, like for real. So now in the last video on the Venom playlist, we talked about the first appearance of Noel, the god of the symbiotes who had returned to claim his children. And when he returned, the first responders were Miles Morales and Eddie Brock, who together alone did what they could to try and hold him off. Or at least the symbiote that Noel constructed or used as an avatar to retrieve the symbiotes or his children that are here on Earth. And the only thing that slowed him down was the Venom Blast from Miles Morales that was more effective on him than fire. But in this event, which is a rapture of sorts for the symbiotes, Noel took the Venom symbiote from Eddie Brock, who had been bonded with Eddie forever. Well, off and on, but you know how them long-term off and on relationships go. But with doing this, he said the symbiote need to be cleansed of the humanity that it adapted by being connected with humans for so long. And he did so by purging it with fire. But he didn't stop there. He then used this avatar symbiote to bond with Eddie Brock and show him the true history of the symbiotes, which dates back billions of years ago before the dawn of the universe as we know it. Because before the Big Bang, there was darkness. And in this darkness, there was Null. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if we get a Null and Void team up, ooh, anyway. And I know I'm reaching, but hey, I had to say it. But within this darkness, this was his realm. And to him, this realm of darkness was complete because he was a creature of the darkness or an old God, if you will. And when this Big Bang occurred, which is what we know as the beginning of creation for the Marvel Universe, for Null, this was more so the arrival of his first enemy which for one was the light intruding on his realm of darkness, but also it was the arrival of the celestials coming to his realm to build the universe as we know it. And before I go any further, I don't want you to think of this necessarily as darkness versus light, but rather as the celestials intruding and colonizing in a realm that already belonged to someone and taking it upon themselves to determine that this realm that they could just enter and without apology, just create the universe as we know it because they declared that this realm was empty space which was the complete and utter opposite of what Noel considered his kingdom to be but with the celestials bringing the light of creation Noel was able to reach into the shadow that was cast from that light and create the necro sword <laughs> yes the necro sword and if you're not sure what that is just stay with me for a little bit i'll explain that in just a moment but because of the light casting his shadow for the first time he was able to reach into the darkness from the light which showed him with that combination that when the light cast its shadow the light had only made that darkness stronger allowing him to form the necro sword which was a creation like no other because this sword was a god killer which Noel used to decapitate the head of one of the Celestials who invaded his realm. But after decapitating that Celestial, the remaining Celestials banished Noel deeper into the darkness, which is where he began to use that head of a Celestial as a forge to begin his next creation. And this really had me wondering, like, is this the original Nowhere? Because back when I first heard of Nowhere, like in the older Nova comics, I, I would always wonder, like, who severed the head of that celestial and around that time talking to friends about comics and they're like oh man you know that's a celestial man you know they're super powerful they can destroy worlds if they want to and to me i'm like okay yeah but who cut off his head because i'm just I'm just, I'm just gonna take a guess and say he pretty powerful too whoever did it and i would always feel like why isn't anybody else worried because whoever did this is probably still out there like it ain't safe it ain't safe <laughs> like this dude's killer is still at large and this is back around like 
close to 10 years ago as far as uh, the Nova comics. And around that time, I was kind of getting back into comics. I had taken a long break from like the 90s and the early 2000s, and I was just getting back into the gist of everything going on. And it wasn't like I lost a lot of sleep over this, like don't take me wrong. But I do remember when this conversation came across, like that was my biggest concern. And fast forward to now, close to 10 years later, with Donny Cates spearheading the new Venom series and giving us this new origin, it just sends me back to that place of paranoia. And we don't know for certain that this is actually nowhere, but I'm just gonna take a guess that at that time, uh, that there was not really many other people cutting off heads of Celestials. You know, now it's another case because they, they get it left and right these days. Like right now in 2018, you can go on Worldstar and see one of these dudes just catching hands. But inside of the severed head of this Celestial, which is out in the middle of what I would say is nowhere because he's pushed beyond creation, deeper into the void. But it's here that he refines his creation, this living necro sword, which would one day go by the name, quote, all black, end quote also known as the God Killer. Because after leaving the workstation which he created out of the severed head of a celestial, he returned to the universe on a mission to destroy everything that the celestials had created. And it was upon this crusade that the Necro Sword would also don the name, the God Slayer. And I know I told you guys before, but I'ma say it again. When it comes to retcons, I love when they tie in to existing continuity. Because this narrative, which is being told by No, and also which spans over the course of eons, it can only hold validation when it lines up with the history as we know it. Because if at no point in time does this history connect, you can just be like, okay, well, you say you did all this, but uh, it don't line up with nothing. This is not the case. Because on Noel's crusade, in this narrative that he is showing Eddie Brock by way of symbiosis, it lines up with the story that took place in Thor, God of Thunder, issue number six that came out back in 2013. And at this time in the Thor, God of Thunder series, there was this barren planet that little to no life could survive upon. And on this planet, two godlike creatures who were battling, they fell to this planet's surface where they were discovered by a native who had given up hope on all gods. And for this native, it was very much because his people constantly prayed to the gods and they had no answer. They were living on this barren planet and everything on this planet was working against them because when they weren't hunted by sand tigers, they then had to worry about starving to death, let alone the unstable terrain because the land was dry and brittle. And for this native man who had seen these two godlike creatures crash, he had lost his mothers to the predators of the land. His wife had passed away in like a landslide. And not long after that, his older son had died of starvation. And it was for this reason that he revolted against the rest of his people because the gods that they prayed to, they did not answer. And at the time when he found these two god creatures, he had been exiled from his people and he had just been wandering, just waiting to die. But when he goes in closer to take a look and investigate this gold in this black creature, the one in the gold armor, he's still alive and he's asking the native to help him. But this dude, he's all out of luck because this native, he's not really in that spiritual place at the moment. And he refuses to help him because he recognizes him as a god who has fell from somewhere above and he's just disgusted at his solicitation. Because for the native, the gods were nowhere to be found his entire life when his people needed them. But it was also at this moment that All Black, the Necro Sword, had bonded with this native. And as far as Noel is concerned, All Black was stolen from him. And that's the way that he sees it from his perspective. Before this native, when this living sword bonded with him, he first used it to finish the guy who was begging for his life. If you ask me, he probably somewhere floating in space holding a grudge. <laughs> but when the native bonded with this necro sword, he had killed his first god, then traveled to the stars to see if he could kill more. And on this journey, during the time that this native held the necro sword, he later became Gore the God Butcher, which is another great story. <laughs> and I'm telling you, man, like Marvel Legacy is pulling so much from Thor, God of Thunder. Like we have been going back to these issues like nobody's business. And really, I feel like it has a lot to do with what we're gonna see from the War of Realms and the return of Malekith, the recent issues of Weapon H, like all of it is coming around full circle. And I just cannot wait to see how it all pans out. 
but as far as Gore's home planet, which at the time during God of Thunder, the planet had no name. It was just referred to as an unnamed planet. Hundreds of years later, Null awoke on that planet and this is where he began to experiment. And it was here that he discovered that if he uses his living abyss and bonds it with host creatures, he could then learn from those creatures about his surroundings and even control them from afar for the purpose of continuing his crusade and destroying everything that the celestials had created. And that's exactly what he did, sending his symbiotes throughout the universe and that's really where we got that flashback earlier in the Venom series to where these men were crying out to Beowulf almost like a god, praying that he would come and help because these symbiotes were destroying everything, sparing nothing in their path. But answering their cry for help, answering their prayer so to speak, came Thor. <laughs> and he's like, I know not what a Beowulf is. <laughs> Beowulf, it's a stupid name. Sounds ugly, but I am pretty and I am mighty. <laughs> you gotta love Thor, man. That's my guy. I mean, like, I don't know him, but you know, in my mind, we're good friends. And, um, but anyway, so Thor came down and he just shocked the mess out of the symbiote. And this, in turn, traveled a signal all the way back to No disconnecting him from the symbiote spread across the galaxy and after that for a while he had no signal i'm talking about sprint coverage in milledgeville georgia no bars and with this symbiote spread across the galaxy breaking up with no connection to their hive leader they broke up and then bonded with whatever was the closest host that would do and as for no on that unnamed planet where his actual body still is the hive turned against him imprisoning his body naming this place Clintar, because that is their word for cage. And Clintar is the cage that they created to be Noel's prison. And since telling Eddie this story, much like an Oculus Rift, he like he really got the VR version. And Miles got a lot of catching up to do because I don't think he heard it from the beginning. But since telling Eddie this story, he has been low key tiptoeing through the galaxy taking them back to the planet Clintar, where his body is. Because if you guys remember in the earlier issues, just before Noel cleansed the Venom symbiote, he had encased all of them within the symbiote he was using as an avatar. And kind of like your method of up close magic, with Miles unconscious for most of the time and Eddie distracted with the story, that entire time he had been tiptoeing through the cosmos and taking them back to Clintar. But that'll do it for this one guys. But once again, I know a lot of you guys have read this already and you've been asking for my thoughts on it. And I can't even deny it, man. Like I am excited. Like Marvel and DC are killing it right now. The writers within their respective companies are in harmony, which makes you want to pick up any and everything they put out because you just want to see what else is connected. And it kind of makes me want to dig into more image and dark horse and look over there like, hey, hey what y'all got going on over there? Is it that good over there too? but we'll see. So let me know that in the comments and be sure to subscribe so you can catch the spills every week and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.